Hey, it's Rob, and it's the holiday season, and what better time to cook some Chex Mix. Well, it's an empty bowl, but, you know, we're going to make Chex Mix in this bowl, because this is about the biggest bowl I got. There are several ways that you can make Chex Mix. Uh, you can add what you want, subtract what you want. If you have an allergy to nuts, you don't have to add the nuts. I'm not a particular fan of pretzels in the Chex Mix, but I do like all of the... Uh, little beasties that normally go into it. One that I like to add is shredded wheat. It tends to uh, absorb and hold the flavor a lot more than the others, but <laughs> the dogs are being healthy. You know, you can add pretty much whatever you want. You can add uh, hot stuff. You can adjust it to your taste, but I'm just going to go over basic recipe. All right, the first and easiest step is to pour in two to three cups each of your basic Chex cereals. And if you have a gluten intolerance, you do not have to add the wheat. saucepan over medium heat. Melt a lot of butter. I mean you'll see various recipes call for you know four tablespoons or something like that. What I have found is take about twice as much as that and then add another half as much again and you'll have about the right amount. This stuff soaks up butter like you wouldn't believe. At this point I'm going to add some peanuts. I've got a couple of different kinds here. Got some hot peanuts or heat, heat peanut. And I got some honey roasted peanuts. Now, I was lucky enough to get a hold of some of this. This is some uh, Chex Party Mix seasoning. And really, it's got some... Well, it's got dried Worcestershire sauce in it, garlic powder, and those are pretty much the uh, pretty much the spices. There's a whole bunch of other stuff in there too. There's the, you know the uh, all the preservatives and stuff. Now, if you don't have that. What you can do is just get some regular Worcestershire sauce. Be generous. Thank you, Piper. Now turn this down to a lower heat, kind of a medium low. Because I still want to get that butter to um, melt, and I don't want it to burn, and I'm trying to keep it from boiling. But the idea is you want to make a uh, kind of an emulsion with the Worcestershire sauce. It's a little more difficult because, you know, the, generally butter and water don't mix very well, but trust me, you can do it. Now, uh, you can add whatever spices you like. I tend to like a lot of garlic powder and oops, wrong one, where it goes. I like to add a little bit of uh, some hot sauce. This is a uh, Frank's. It's kind of got that vinegary flavor to it, and that's a good complement to 
all the rest of the things that are in here. Like I said, you can adjust this to your liking. You can put in whatever spices you like. Give it a good stir. Make sure everything is dissolved. I got a chunk of garlic powder in there. Finish the bottle. That's what we need. Okay, just looking at that amount, I'm gonna guess that's not enough. <laughs> this uh, this stuff absorbs really quickly into the Chex mix. What I like to do is uh, prepare a baking sheet with some cooking parchment. And matter of case, matter of fact, uh, I made a couple of them because this is a fairly big batch. You want these to be spread pretty thin, so you want—I mean, don't skimp on the cookie sheets, on the or baking sheets, whatever you want to call them. Start stirring. A really nice trick if you have the ability is to have a couple of bowls and you can go back and forth between them. The idea is you want to get everything pretty thoroughly coated. Nice and even. It's actually coming out okay. I think that's pretty thoroughly mixed. There's a couple in here that didn't quite get it. Not bad. Mm. Now comes the easy part. Pipe and cheek. And two. Oven is at 230 degrees and the camera is kind of blurry. I'm not entirely sure why. Now we just let that bake for about an hour. Uh, really you should come in and stir it a little bit about every 15 minutes but I generally don't do that because I've got other things going on and you know this is a pretty easy one to just put in the oven and leave it. Um, I'll come in and check on it. I've got it set a little bit lower. I've got it set for 230. Um, recipe usually calls for 250. I don't think 20 degrees is going to make that much difference but I just want to make sure that it doesn't burn. So I'll be back in a little while and uh, hopefully we'll have Chex Mix. You being healthy? Thanks for being healthy. There we go. That is Chex Mix. 
it's not completely dry yet, but it's now in a place where it can sit out and dry off a little bit better. Food dehydrator works too, but this is, <clears throat> there's something about toasting them a little bit that really adds to the flavor. Oh yeah. Of course, if you're like me and you have healthy dogs around, trying to find a place to put these to dry is a little more difficult. I can't just leave them out because the dogs will... <coughs> exactly. Isis says, yes, we will do that. Um, so I'm going to put them outside on, you know, on the breezeway to cool down and dry out a little bit. Well, I don't know if dry out's the right word. It's actually raining today. It's Christmas and it's raining in Minnesota. Anyway, um, that's the Chex Mix recipe. So, hope you and your uh, your family, your friends, whatever it is that you got, are having a happy holidays. See you later.